everybody my name is Jason I'm Caden and we are the Yahoo and the tour channel and it is one of these early morning milk runs for us and we are hanging out at the milk farm and so um, I thought we'd spend a little bit of time with you guys and a little bit of time with the word and you know we just got done with Enoch and um, it, the theme I guess the theme of, of what I could see, the theme of the, the scriptures, when you read from Genesis to the end of Revelation and Enoch, and right now we're about to, you know, endeavor into First Peter, but the theme is all the same. It's, if you will obey my laws, statutes, and commands, I will be your father, your creator, your Elohim, and you will be my people. It's always been the same, and it's never changed, and it never will change, and even though the Christian church has, has basically tricked everybody into believing that the laws of God are no more and that you don't need to keep them. Well, that is not what the Bible says. And so I would encourage every one of you guys to read your Bibles, to get in the scriptures, to understand what the, the laws, statutes and commands of our creator truly say. And it's always about obedience. And the obedience is not a it's not a hard thing. It's not a terrible thing. It is not a thing that you have to, you know, have shackles on your feet. And, you know, that's what I think most people believe is that you end up with shackles on your feet and that you are um, stuck to a, a uh, really like, a, basically you're enslaved. You're in some way you're enslaved. And, you know, the Christian church is always talking about freedom and it's always talking about, oh, the, 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 they're, they're, they're free without the law. And, you know, that's the, one of the biggest things is, is that is absolutely not truth at all is they are, they are more, they are more in, enslaved into Hasatan's world without the freedom of the Torah. And I believe James is the one that talks about the freedom of the Torah. And there's a lot of places that talk about the freedom of the Torah. And if you don't understand what that means and you don't, you haven't read the Torah, Kate, can you tell me a little bit about what the freedom of the Torah means to you? The Torah would mean it makes you free, right? How does how does it, how does the Torah make you free? It frees you from Hasatan. It frees you from the curses. It it frees you in everyday life. It helps you out through everything you do. It frees you from guilt. It frees you from a state where if you are not constantly going against the words of our Creator, then you have a better chance at being blessed and better chance at being in the palm of our Creator's hands. So as we turn over here and we roll into First Peter, um, this is a, a tremendous book. It's a tremendous chapter, and um, I let's just let's go through it like we always do and, and see what we can pull out of it. First of all, uh, Peter is not his name isn't actually Peter. Um, his name is Kephas, uh, and he uh, you know it's it's everything he, you know this third fourth word in there is Yahushua and that is what everyone knows as of as Jesus the Christ and so there is no there were no J's in Hebrew um, there were it was wise and so it's Yahushua Yeshua um, these these guys say have it as Yahushua Yahushua um, it's like Joshua with a Y and it's very important that you know this because the Bible's clearly says there's only one name under heaven by which you may be saved and if we are using the pagan name or a name that the, the king put in there, right? It wasn't even, there was no even such a name until 1611. There was no such name as Jesus. Prior to the 1611 King James Bible, it was Iesus, I-E-S-U-S. -S. And so it's even then, it's not even close. It's Yahushua, Yahshua. And so let's, let's begin. Kepha, an apostle of Yahushua Hamashiach, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithia, elect according to the foreknowledge of Elohim the Father through sanctification of the Ruach unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So one thing I'd like to point out here is that this is, it says right after the Ruach, which is, is spirit, it says unto obedience. So I, Cade, what, what do you think that means right there? Unto obedience. That means he is probably obeying what, Yahush, what the Father had said and says, "Follow my Torah." Yeah, and so this is this is a letter to these people, and he's again giving adjectives, description words of what it means to be with our Creator, and this is is unto obedience. There's 
that is the theme of the Torah. It, it is always obedience unto our creator. And it's not obedience, again, not, not like a slave master. It's not like the old white guys and the black slave, you know, the, the slave masters and, the, and, you know, the stories we heard of, of the, the evil, the evil white guys, like really beating the, their, the slaves is nothing like this, right? There's nothing like this. This is a free will system. This is you either choose my ways and live as, as he wants you to live, or we deny the truth and live in sin and eat our pork chops and, and do evil things that he says are bad. Verse three. This is, this is a trinity breaker right here, guys. This, again, is a trinity breaker in First Peter. Blessed be the Elohim and Father of our Adonai Yahushua HaMashiach, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us anew unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Yahushua HaMashiach from the dead. So right here it says the Father, the Father of Yahushua, Yahushua is, 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 we're talking to, to you know, the, it's blessing, be from the Elohim, which is our, our creator, which is a, a specifically um, used the plural thus, the Elohim, supreme Elohim, the creator of the heavens and earth and father, right? There's It doesn't say and the same one, right? And so when we read the Trinity into it, which is yet another creed of Nicaea deception is another Catholic church deception um, that has everybody believing that the father and the son are, are the same and they're not the same. It's the father and the son. To an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, and that fades not away, reserved in heaven for you. And that's a big word right there. It, it's it's an inheritance is something we we all wish for, right? We hope that that we are in an inheritance, and this inheritance is the inheritance of holiness. It is an inheritance of that we will get to go where we deserve to go. And without our Messiah, Yahushua, we deserve to go to hell because we've all broken the Torah from the, from three years old when we put our hand in the cookie jar and stole a cookie. We've all broken it and we all fall under the, the curse of the Torah, which is spiritual death. Verse five, sorry. And I'm sorry I'm sniffing. I'm still sick, folks. Verse five, who are kept by the power of Elohim through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice Though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might it be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahushua HaMashiach. A lot of words there. A lot of words, right? And what did it say in 7? Is It's talking about our faith. And that our faith is more precious than gold. And in this world, the world we live in, they have gold as the most precious commodity there is, right? Who, what's more valuable than gold, you know? And, that, and this is, this says gold perishes, right? All of this stuff of this earth, the, the greed and the lust and all this, this worldly trash, it's all going to be gone. It's all going to be gone. And the only thing that matters at the end of the day is where is your soul going to go after this? Where is your walk? today going to lead you tomorrow. Verse eight, whom having not seen ye love in whom though now ye see him not ye believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And that's, that's still a lot of us, right? Uh, if you were not walking as the apostles, none of us have seen our, our Messiah. None of us have seen our creator, but we know they exist based upon the accounts of others prior to this. At a time when our creator walked with us, he walked with us and he gave us a, a set of guidelines. And even if this set of guidelines was some man-made joke that was, it was just a joke and you lived your life like this, you're going to be a very good person. You're not going to be stealing and lusting and you're not going to be adultering. You're not going to be fornicating. You're not going to be all of this stuff right? You're going to be a good person. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because it will lead to life regardless. But then when you put in it that our creator has given us these, these, these kind of guidelines because he's holy and he says for us to be holy at all times, then it makes a lot more sense that he wants righteous people, people that are yearning for righteousness, yearning for the Torah. Verse nine, receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls. So what is the end of your faith? Well, if you have faith now, your reward, when you're at the end of it, you're going to be rewarded for your faith. And it says, even the salvation of our souls. What do you mean even? 
the salvation of our souls. That is what we are after. We are, that is, that is what we are after is the salvation of our souls and that we are going to live a life outside of this evil world that we are at. Verse 10, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. And, and yeah, the prophets of old, they've all looked for salvation until we had our Mashiach. We didn't have that. We did not have salvation. Searching what? Or what manner of time the Ruach Mashiach, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Mashiach and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the Besorah, the good news, right? That is what the Besorah is. It's the good news that our Messiah has, has come. Unto you with the Ruach HaKadosh sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahushua HaMashiach. And then here's a big one, right? Here's a, here's an, here's an important thing. And, and you know, this is a, a book that is in what the Christians call the New Testament, which is what they should believe in, right? This is part of it. And it says, as obedient children. Let's stop there. What in the world is he talking about? Who's obedient to who? And if it's even the Messiah Yahushua, the, the will of, of Messiah Yahushua was the will of Yahuwah. So it's, it's the same. It's one and the same. They're not the same, but their will, is, their, their team goals are the exact same. That doesn't make them the same people. But it says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. What does that mean? Well, it means that your our former lives, guys, back when I was a Babylonian, back when I lived in Babylon, back when I was in North America, and I used to... The, the shows my wife and I used to watch as, you know, in our private time was insane. I think back to the stuff and the stuff on HBO and the stuff on Showtime and the stuff that we would get into, the, the crazy stuff. And now I think of it and I'm like, wow, five minutes of that compared to the Torah is, is, is I was burning. I had, I died then I would have died in tremendous sin. I would have been judged according to my works and my works were evil. My works were dark. And, and that's where we want to get away from. We, we don't want to live like Babylonians. And so we, our, for our ignorance is that we didn't know the Torah. And I did not know the Torah, right? I had my former lust in, in the ignorance, right? I still have flashbacks to the evil shows we watch. And there's nothing I can do about it. All I can do is protect my children from the evil that I've encountered in my own life because I didn't, I didn't have a Torah. I didn't have a set of laws and guidance that I should know that this is evil and this is good. This is what you do. I was a Christian all my life and I could repent of my sins. I could do whatever I wanted to do and I would always be able to repent. And some Christians will go, oh, honey, the Holy Spirit will, will tell you what's, what's right and wrong. The Holy Spirit would tell you what's right and wrong if you were under the guidance of our Creator and in covenant with Him. If you're out eating pork chops and you're praying for blessings on the pork chops or bacon and you're going to pray that the, the evil of the bacon doesn't hurt you, you're not in covenant. None of this. You're not an obedient child and you're still in former lust. The ignorance is you know that bacon is bad for you. Swine is bad for you. You shouldn't touch it. You shouldn't get near it, any of that, right? And so this is where we're going. Verse 15, but as he which what has called you is holy... So be ye holy in all manner of conversation, right? Keep your speak, your way you speak, the way you talk, the way you talk with your brothers, the way you talk with your sisters, the way you talk with everyone. Keep it holy. Everything that we say and do is recorded on the heavenly tablets and it will be brought before our creator at the end of times. It says that over and over and over. So because it is written, be holy for I am holy. And if ye call on the father who without respect of persons judges according to every man's works... Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Guys, what does that mean? You're going to be judged according to every man's work? Okay, what does that mean? Where It says right here, we, the father who without respect of persons judges according to every man's works. What are every man's works? Every man's works is what, what have you done in your lifetime? Are you out there sinning? Are you, or are you doing my will? Are you out there doing the Torah as I say? Are you fishing for the men that I told you to fish for? What what is what was your life's goal? What were you working on your entire life? Yeah, what, your works, and as James says, your you, people have faith, and he will show you his faith by his works, right? Your works are keeping the the, the Torah. The, that is the only way that we have any kind of works whatsoever. Whose works would we be doing if we didn't have the Torah? Nobody's. We'd be doing the works of Hasatan. If we are not living the Torah, we are not in the works of a Torah. Then we are by default living as Hasatan wants us to live. 
For as much as ye know, verse 18, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Mashiach as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who truly was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Wow. So everybody says that in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And they say that Elohim is Yahuwah and Yahushua. And they say that's where the Trinity comes from. It's all in one. But it doesn't. It doesn't say that. It says right here that our Messiah was foreordained before the foundation of the world. We weren't even created when Yahushua was hanging with Yahuwah. Right? It's a father something in it, probably another world and probably another thing. And Yah's like the mad inventor of, of this, wherever he's at. Whatever they're doing, they had a a life before us. As crazy as that sounds, he was there. And so when he was at creation with his father, he was at creation with his father. Watching watching pops get down. He was crazy. You know, who who could do that? You know? Verse 21. Who by him do believe in Elohim? that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in Elohim. See, okay, and this is again, our our faith and hope is in Elohim, right? And we have everybody that's out there worshiping Yahushua as Yah. And there are no other gods before me, right? It, it, he is a jealous Elohim. He does not want to share godship with anybody. And he, he says that he doesn't. And his son is not God. So we got to get past that and we got to it doesn't mean it doesn't take anything away from Yahushua in fact it makes it even more of an exciting story because the son did what the father did he, he told him to do right he this is I want you to do this I need you to go walk this walk and in the end it's going to be a violent horrible evil death but I need you to do this and he did it right okay verse 22 seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Ruach unto love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. What does that mean? Obeying the truth. Kate, what does that mean here? Seeing that you purified your souls in obeying the truth. Well, according to Psalms, when he says your truth is light, he is talking about the Torah. So obeying the Torah. Yeah, that's that's where it is. There's nothing other than the truth. That is the truth. Right? And so it's like through the, the spirit of truth, right? The Ruach of truth un, unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. How? How are you incorruptible? By the word of Elohim, which lives and abides forever. Guys, the, the Peter right here says it is the word of Elohim, right? That abides forever. This whole thing, the entire scriptures, everything we have is about this. Verse 24, for all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower therefore fall, thereof falls away. Listen, we're done. But the word of Yahuwah endures forever. And this is the word which by the Besora is preached unto you. Okay, my friends, my family, everybody out there, okay, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, I appreciate your guys' time. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Guys, I hope you're reading this, these books. I, I cannot get enough of this. I read it. I explain it as I see it. Um, and, you know, everywhere that I see it, it's always the same thing. Okay, do you got any, uh, got any parting words for the family? Read your Bibles. Have a nice day. That's right. Have a nice day. Um, all glory to Yah, and may his son come soon. Much love. Oh, and don't take the snake bite. I'm out.